Good afternoon, and welcome to St. James Catholic Church. For any visitors who might be with us, you are very welcome. Thank you for being here. Please stand as we begin our celebration and join in singing number 831 as we gather at your table, number 831. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome to the 28th celebration in, uh, of Sunday in ordinary time. The Lord Jesus, in the gospel today, invite each one of us to prioritize the kingdom of God over the material world. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold and few of her is a little sand. And before her, her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render account. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said to him, You are lacking one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at these words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard is it to to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through an eye of a needle than for one who's rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? For human, Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We've given up everything to follow you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brother or sister or mother or father or children or land for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come, the gospel of the Lord.
let Cardinal Francis Xavier Nguyen Van Thuong, a great Vietnamese spiritual advisor, once told a US billionaire, quote, true civilization is to leave no one behind, end quote. The billionaire replied, quote, one day I will give back to the world what I have collected, end quote. This answer seems to be more advanced than the rich young man in today's gospel passage. While the rich young man heard the Lord's suggestion and went away sad, the wise billionaire answered and left it there. He will do something in the future, but not today. Future can be a day not far away, maybe tomorrow, but it can also be a, a day far, very far away. My dear sisters and brothers, when reflecting on this Sunday Gospel, the conversation between the cardinal and the billionaire came to my mind first, and then many questions came to my mind later. What are the relationships between faith and reward, or between virtue and wealth? Why must this rich young man give up his riches in order to follow Jesus? Why does Jesus say that it is hard for people of wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven? Why did the cardinal remind that billionaire of caring for those who are less fortunate or much, much poorer than him? Have the young man and the billionaire done something wrong for the poor? Do they hinder the progress of the poor? Do they steal the bread and butter of the poor? Do they stand in the way of the success of the poor or benefit from the misfortune of the unfortunate? Are they responsible for the poverty of the poor around them? The answers for all the yes no questions, I think, are no. So, what is the key point? What is the key point that the Lord Jesus wants to tell us today? The key point that the Lord wants to tell us today, I think, is to prioritize the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven over material wealth and possessions. In other words, Lord Jesus invite the rich young man and all of us, yes, all of us, to step away from the captivity, of, from the captivity to possessions and material wealth into the freedom to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus in the gospel said to the young man, you lack, you lack one thing, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven, then come follow me. Follow Jesus doesn't mean physically follow him, rather follow Jesus means follow his way of life, a symbol humble, poor, and pure life. But unfortunately, selfishness has squeezed this young man's heart. He cannot let go of his captivity to material wealth because his greed is greater than generosity. Notice that his possessions did not constitute a problem for him. It was his unwillingness to share and to give that caused the problem. For this reason, the word rich appears here, rendering the meaning of greedy. His mountain of wealth is so high that he cannot see the mystery of other people. His greed is too deep to be taken out and uprooted. This young man was not simply rich, but also greedy. And the Lord was sad to see him walking away in the darkness of his heart. So how do we interpret the Lord's teaching on riches and wealth today? One thing for sure is, is that riches or wealth do not in themselves exclude anyone from the kingdom of God. Riches or wealth in themselves do not exclude anyone from the kingdom of God. However, 
According to the Lord, it is hard for the people of wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Why? What, why did the Lord say that? In my opinion, perhaps because it is harder for people of wealth to accept the conditions of authentic and true Christian living. These conditions include total trust in God, not in riches, nor wealth, and a giving heart rather than a hoarding heart. Additionally, riches or wealth carries it with, with it the responsibility of investing it well. This can be a great destruction, a great spiritual destruction and worry that prevent people from building a real relationship with God and with other people. And last but not least, there may be a, there may be a lacking of sharing from people of wealth to put it another way. The problem is not wealth per se, but the attitude toward this. As people accumulate riches, they are tempted to, tr to trust in their projections and their powers of acquiring them rather than in God and his love for their ultimate security and comfort. And this attitude can also lead to pride. My dear sister and brothers, this is the case of the rich young man in the gospel today, and also the case of the billionaire in the story too. They have it all, but they have no generosity. They are rich in material things, but are not rich in giving and in love. They have all resources, but have no God. That, my dear brothers and sisters, is also the tragedy of many people today, modern people, especially us, who are living in the Western world, have a lot of resources, but have very few close friends. We spend a lot of time making money, but very little time with family and friends. We have multiplied our possessions, but reduced our values. We have higher incomes, but lower morals. We live a longer life, but our, relation, our relationship with other people are fragile and easily broken. We are very good, yes, we are very good at finding ways to make a living, but we don't pay enough attention to create a life of love. We seek to accumulate and possess a lot of wealth, but rarely find a way to cultivate Christ-like character and virtues. We prone to rely on ourselves and our own capacity rather than in God. And maybe, yes, maybe when listening to today's gospel, many of us think that God is not talking to me because I am still very poor. I have nothing to give. God is speaking to my selfish neighbor next door. Oh, God is reminding the rich people in my parish. So I am safe because God does not blame poor people like me. Well, let me tell you this. We are so blessed. Yes, you are so blessed. Living in this country, have a look at the lives of people in third world countries like in Africa, in South America, or in Asia. First, and then you will know who really are the poor. My dear sisters and brothers, our Lord in the gospel today does not condemn wealth and riches, nor does he measure the materialist psyche, nor does he quantify the amount of goods and property that a follower of his may possess, nor does he say that the rich cannot possibly enter the kingdom of God and that they are incapable of living true and authentic Christian life. Our Lord instead points out the additional difficulties that wealth brings to the already demanding Christian enterprise, that is, the detraction, the worry, and above all else, the risk 
of a divided heart. Let us then not waste our time in useless condemnation of wealth, but commit or recommit ourselves to the priority that our Lord teaches us. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his reign over your heart. And all these things will be given you besides. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. Trusting that the Lord provides for our needs, let us bring all the burdens of our hearts to our Father in heaven who loves us. For the church, may the Lord continue to bless her and protect her from all evils. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all nations and peoples, may the peace of Christ turn all swords into plowing shares, resulting in healing and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord our for all who bear financial responsibilities for family, may God's providence free them from any anxiety. We pray to the Lord. Lord our for any of our parish community living through times of strife, may the Holy Spirit bring them peace and unity. We pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters in St. Mark Parish in Haiti, we pray to the Lord. We remember in our prayers Lawrence Trapp, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For those who have passed from this life to the next, may they be swiftly ushered into eternal banquet of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear the prayers we offer to you in the trust that you fulfill all our needs. We add this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 585, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, number 585.
very brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. I accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotion we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his powerful mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the joke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with our end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never see to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured down for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and, and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrifice of wisdom, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and fear with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. James, and glorious models, and all the saints, on whose content intercession in your presence will rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim just on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to shrink to my own, but I will say for communion hymn is number 931, One Bread, One Body, number 931.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which come from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us share us of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We have three announcements tonight. Extraordinary, the parish will be holding Extraordinary Minister of Holy Communion update training on Tuesday, October 12th at 7 p.m. No registration is required. Just come to the church for the update training. St. James Catholic Church Accountability Report is available for all parishioners. Visit our website under the About Us section. See the bulletin for details. During this month of Mary, we will pray the rosary together on Saturday, October 23rd at 4 p.m. Come early for the 5 p.m. Mass and join the fellow parishioners in their devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary. That's all. Thank you, Deacon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 630, Immortal Invisible, number 630.